Chapter 1. Slight of Mind Orist loped into Stormwind just after dawn. The dew was still glistening on the trees outside the entrance, but already the sounds of commerce were in the rapidly warming air. Should be a good day for business, thought Orist as he squeezed past an outbound ox wagon and stepped through the front gate of the city. He held a very large box filled with smaller objects that clattered around at each awkward step. His long arms were barely able to keep their grip around it as he walked, but he finally arrived without dropping it, at what he hoped would be his post for the better part of the day. He pulled his brown hair back into a ponytail, uncovering a long, thin face that looked older than his sixteen years. It was Friday, and the spot near the fountain was the perfect place to cover the traffic to and from both the inn and the bank. People often feel lucky after leaving either place, flush with booze, cash, or both. He opened the box and took out a folding table along with a smaller box full of shells, all with many layers of red paint to mask their unique flaws. He grabbed seven out of the box. The last item taken out was a very small leather ball, worn smooth from months of use. Oris gave a quick glance around him. Oh, great, he mumbled under his breath as a city guard approached. What you doing there, punk? the guard asked. What do you mean? Oris asked, feigning surprise. Twenty percent or leave, the guard sneered, trying his best to seem menacing, though he was several inches shorter than Orist. Guards could be a real trouble sometimes, but this one was clearly a rookie, barely older than Orist. He was bluffing. All of the most skilled and best trained soldiers had been sent to Outland to fight the Burning Legion, and the best of the rest were frequently busy repulsing incursions by orcs in the east as they apparently were today. This rookie was typical of the city guards recently. Ten percent, said Orist. It's Friday. The take will be good today, and if I go somewhere else, I'll make less, but you'll get nothing. The guard grunted. Well, fine, but I'll be watching you to make sure you're not shorting me. Stormwind's finest sauntered off with his chest puffed out, convinced he had made his point. Hack, thought Orist as he laid the shells in a line on the table and put the leather ball under the middle shell. Step right up and test your skill, ladies and gentlemen, barked Orist over the noise of the throngs of travelers hurrying through the streets. Special Friday payout today, four to one. It was nearly noon and already business was excellent. His hands were quick today and even those with the keenest eyes weren't winning. It was lunchtime and the din of the crowd started to lull as people went home or to the restaurants to eat. Soon it would be time to grab a bite to eat himself and drink something to relieve his overworked voice. An old man with a shabby cane began doddering up the walkway to the bank and Orist made his final pitch of the morning, more as a joke than anything else. What do you say, old-timer? Feeling lucky today? The old man looked at him vacantly, and then lurched slowly toward him. Orist sighed audibly. Oh, no, he thought to himself. He's some crazy old man. I never should have tried to pitch him. Probably doesn't have any money anyway. Much to Orist's surprise, he plunked down twenty gold pieces on the table. Impressive, he thought. Lunch could wait. His hands spun furiously over the shells, moving them across the table effortlessly. He stopped moving them and looked at the old man, waiting for him to make a choice. He pointed to the shell furthest to his right, which Orist lifted. Nothing there. Sorry, man, just not your day, Orist said with mock empathy as he took the old man's gold off the table. The old man muttered something under his breath and threw down twenty more gold pieces. What is he doing, thought Orist as he laid out the game again. I hope this guy is richer than he looks. So far he seems to be. Walking gold mine. Again, the shells were dispersed at top speed, little red spots flying across the brown wooden table. The man picked the second shell from the left. There was the ball. Orist winced. Even a blind squirrel gets a nut every now and then, he thought, as he gave a portion of the day's total to the old man. Oddly, the man didn't seem to even register that he had won. There was no change in expression, and he continued to mutter to himself intermittently. Still expressionless, he put another twenty gold pieces back down on the table. That was luck. This is just a numbers game. He just has to keep playing, and I'll have all his money in short order, thought Orist. Not this time. Thrice more, the old man won. Orist's face was burning. This was impossible. That was his entire morning's work. The old man chuckled. Keep the money and come with me, he said in a suddenly determined and decidedly sane voice. Orist grabbed the money quickly before the crazy old man could change his mind and doled out the guard's share into a bag. He motioned to the rookie to take the bag of gold on top of the box with his ten percent. As Orris stashed the box in a corner for lunch and put his winnings in his satchel, he eyed the man carefully and said, Um, yeah, thanks for the gold, but I don't think so. Why should I? The old man lowered his head and stared directly into Orris's eyes, 
bending forward to get close to his ear. He whispered one word to Orest, and turned to walk down the street toward the mage's quarter. The blood which had all been in Orest's face just a moment before all drained at once, and he staggered back a step. As he began to follow the old man along the uneven cobblestones, his brain was numb and swimming with shock. Who was this guy?